put together a very well um, organized program. And I think everybody we invited came. Amen. 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 And we had church and we got in and got out. So we want to appreciate you all again uh, for coming out because we all we wanted to do was lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now listen. It's the Thanksgiving holiday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now that's something to be thankful for. Amen. 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 And it's just a little quiet in here this morning. I told Mike, I said, Mike, I'm, I'm like, Pastor, energy level is low, but when I walk through the doors of the church, Amen. that energy got to go in again. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Because if the Lord has been as good to you as he's been to me, I have something to be thankful Amen. for. Amen? Amen. 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 Holiday season, you know, folks get to tend to be out of town, but guess what? We're here. We're going to give the Lord some praise. Amen? Amen. Will you all pray for the choir as we sing this morning? Sing choir.
y'all are glad for the blood of Jesus? Are you glad for the blood of Jesus? Had he not gone up on that cross, we don't know where we would be. Amen? Amen. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me, way back on Calvary, I love Jesus. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Church, say amen. 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. amen. Good morning, St. Emmanuel. Uh, I thank Pastor Garnett for giving me the opportunity once again to stand at the sacred desk and uh, bring something that we might be able to feed off of and uh, refuel for the coming weekend season. Amen. 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 Uh, all flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. Oh, yeah. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God. Oh, yeah. I said the word oh, yeah. Of our God yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. stands oh, yeah. forever. Amen. Somebody in the house love the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 I got a good word for you this morning. Um, sometimes it's appropriate to stay on a message until we can uh, reap out of it all that the Lord has sown in it. And, uh, in this season uh, of uh, disregard for the truth. My Lord, my Lord. Amen. And the grace of the Lord. It's good that the Bible has a vision for us. Amen. To uh, take and to run a little further. Amen. The Lord is full of life. All life springs from Him. And I'm always thankful to the Lord for his gift of eternal life. Oh, yeah. And if you get to know the Lord uh, in your life, in the uh, pardon of your sins especially, you know, he will give life to you as well. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Our message this morning is coming from none other than the book of 1 Corinthians help, help. chapter 1. Uh, perhaps you were so blessed when I brought it originally. Thankfully, uh, the Lord has improved a little bit <laughs> on what I uh, performed in uh, bringing that message to you before. But uh, we thank the Lord that he's given me a chance once again to uh, run it by you once again. My Bible talks about the glory, glory ink only in the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we want to look at verse 26. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 26 to the end of the chapter. Uh, the New King James Version reads like this. For you see in your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh, no flesh, Yes. should glory in his presence. Mm. But we want to put special emphasis on the last two. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God mm. and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. 
And then, if I may add as a tag uh, for this sermon, we want to call this somebody bigger than you and I. Somebody bigger than you and I. Amen. Anybody in here got confidence? Confidence? If you got confidence in something, you have probably something to boast about. Okay? If anybody has anything to boast about, surely I do. Amen. Amen. I'm a <laughs> replant in Texas. I come from Philadelphia. I grew up there. I was born in Virginia, so I've been around a little bit. Amen. I'm the son of a professional soldier. Right. Okay. Came to Texas. Uh, we lived in San Antonio, Luam. Uh, through the military, uh, I came through the 19th Army Band in New Jersey. Then my wife and I were sent to the 8th Army Band in Yangsan, Seoul, Korea, where we right. lived for a year, where I was introduced to Denton, Texas. Wow, wow, wow. Okay? So the way the Army got us here, we came through uh, Fort Sam, Fort, Fort Sam in uh, San Antonio, okay? And uh, I had the uh, opportunity to go to school down there. I started in, in associate arts, okay? In music, okay? Just continuing my studies. I had already established a uh, profession in the music business by playing for Uncle Sam. Right. And I just wanted to get credit for yeah. what I knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went to San Antonio College, got enough credits to come to UNT and matriculate in, finished the last 30 hours there, got an associate's degree uh, in music there, and was going to continue in jazz studies, but the Lord had a different plan. Okay, I was already married, my first child on the way, uh, took a test, my dad, captain, the captain, <laughs> Captain Earl Guard, I'm a junior, he told me to take a test, which I did for the military, and it showed that I had a different attitude than music. Amen. Uh, so I had to put brakes on that minor uh, uh, area of study and move over to what they call, at the time, uh, business information systems. Information systems, which they call information technology today. This was 1979. <laughs> So we all benefit from going to the moon, okay? I got two more degrees, okay? So like I said, if anybody has reason to boast, I do. I got an AA, I got an MS. 1997, I got an MBA in it. And for the last almost 40 years, I have been doing technology in one form or another. You name a, a technology a title, I've held it. Okay, in one form or another, and done the work. Amen. But the Lord had a different plan. Okay. He put a yearning on my heart to know Him. Uh, I was fortunate uh, when I went started college. I couldn't read. I had to go through remedial reading. And uh, at Temple University in Philly, where I started my college career, I had to go through remedial reading and they got me started. But uh, the military interrupted that. Uh, but going to a junior college, you know, turned that, you know, weakness, that shortcoming in my life around. And I, I'm able to read pretty well, you know, when I came up here. So, uh, if anyone has reason to boast, no. I do. No. 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 Okay, uh, uh, we as you know, black people haven't always been encouraged Amen. to be literate folks. Uh -huh. You know, especially us men. Oh, yeah. You are know, right. always uh, urged to get a trade or something like that. You know, to uh, go ahead and uh, make a life for ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay? But some of us are intellectually and academically. Inclined. Uh, yes, you know, yes. Anybody around here who knows me oh, yeah. knows that I am. Okay? You could be uh, 
Booker T. Washington, oriented, you know which many of us are, this is a great thing. You could be W.E.B. Du Bois, uh -huh. oriented to oh, yeah. the black intellectuals, mm -hmm. okay? That's the way I was oriented. So uh, if anyone has a reason to boast, you know, I do. But fortunately for me, I stood down here at the corner uh, practicing, trying to get better, you know, at uh, the music profession. And I saw the lights, to the church is here, and I wondered, Lord, what's going on there? Right. What is going on in the past? Right. Right. Fortunately for me, I was already saved. Okay, I was saved from seven, eight years old and uh, started in the Catholic Church. Okay. Uh, but I went through the you know Catholic version of being dipped. <laughs> I got sprinkled there, but I uh, went through Holy Communion and uh, First Holy Communion. So if anyone has reason to boast, I did. And the Lord put uh, the music of the church on me. I didn't learn how to play uh, in the university as it were. I learned how to play here wow, wow. in the church. The Lord taught me how to play here. I could read music. Anybody tell you who plays, reading is not going to get you to play. You know, you got to sit down and actually do it. Amen. Fortunately for me, I was blessed to come here for uh, some 23 years and play for Amen. this wonderful Amen. choir. Amen. 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 I was in the rotation. Okay, obviously we have a, a wonderful player Amen. here now who's able Amen. to uh, take over those duties. But the Lord blessed me with uh, to be a uh, professor of his word. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I've taught here, uh, you know, Man. if anyone has a reason Man. to boast, uh, it's me. Uh, Amen. Amen. But my boast is not in, you know, the, the degrees, it's not in the work I've done, it's in the gift of eternal life Man. and what it's done for me. Man. And you can have the same thing Amen. if you don't already. Amen. 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 You already have it. I'm sure you're blessed. You know, I see your smiles on your face when I come here to teach on Sunday school. When I mention it in, uh, from the holy desk, you know, there are many of you who can relate, and it's a wonderful gift to have. And a, a one thing I'm certain, after having been around the block in this life a few times, is that if you want. To be a success, there's a way that has proven to be very satis very uh, satisfying and successful. Okay? That way is to become part of something bigger than yourself. Amen. You're part of the uh, church as a saved person. You're redeemed. You're part of something bigger than yourself. Amen. And the, the enjoyable thing about it is that there are so many ways to do it. Amen. You don't have to depend on my way. You can find your own way. The Lord has a way just for you. Amen. Amen. So what is it that makes you want to get up out of your seat and get involved? Maybe you can sing or play well enough to lead a worship service in song. It helps the congregation to get in the mindset to worship. Perhaps you're good at prayer. You can certainly change the mood of focus of this on the Spirit of God, allowing many of us to feel better in the presence of God. Many of us love sports, okay? When football season is uh, going on as it is now, uh, can hardly wait sometimes to see the new players and prospects who've come to offer their abilities to make the team better. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Maybe your game is basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always some trade or draft pick that comes along to add a new chemistry to the team's roster with the power to extend, extend the team's skill set. Okay. There's so many ways to do bigger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What about business? Okay. 
If you like serving the market with goods and or services of a kind, there are many opportunities to produce and opportunities to team up to produce whatever you're in self-employment or employment market to offer. All right. And just present yourself in the most professional way you know how to offer what you've got or what you do to get that big, important sale or job. Maybe you like working alone. Okay, the Bible has many recommendations for you as a small business entrepreneur. Okay, make the best widget or provide the best service there is, and people will make a pathway to your doorway. Yeah. There are so many ways to approach your field of work through training and opportunities in breaking new grounds of achievement with success. Whatever set of skills and abilities God has given you, he'll provide a way for you to use them if you trust him. Getting and learning that skill and getting the experience using it are all a part of becoming part of something bigger than yourself. Amen? If you have the faith, God has the blessing. Our scripture for today wants us to consider where we are when the Lord found us, or where we were when the Lord found us and called us to the prize of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Where were you when the Lord asked you to come up a little higher? Maybe you were just trying to do right by mommy and daddy. Okay? Maybe you watched God work in someone else's life and you asked him to do the same for you. Perhaps you heard about the Lord's kingdom beginning in the hearts of men and women like you, and you asked the Lord to get a handle on you. And you gave yourself freely to him. Okay? Well, whatever it took, he is worthy to call on and will earn your praise. Another thing Paul, the writer of our text today, wanted us to know is that God can take you where you are and lead you right up into the heights of greatness you never knew you were able to achieve. How do I know that? He took me. I was a little dirty, rusty me. <laughs> Alley hanging out, street speaking, radio listening, you know, caught up in the music of the day, like Motown and Stax and Aretha and all that, but still, still the Lord, he picked me up, sat me down, put, put, put my feet on solid ground. And from that day forward, you know, I was always interested to hear what he might have in store for me. Okay? Maybe you watch God work in someone else's life and you ask him to do the same for you. Perhaps you heard about the Lord's kingdom beginning in the hearts of men and women, you ask. Well, whatever it took, he's worthy to call on and will earn your praise. Okay? Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Meaning, if the Lord builds you up, that is, exalts you, yeah. it's not going to cost you a thing. Right, right, right. Okay? But it will make you glory in the Lord. Okay? Your praise won't be in your flesh, but for the Lord himself. Amen. The real blessing, the real blessing, of the passages doesn't stop there. Paul's letting us know that God's greatest and best gift, okay, he gave to you is putting you in the hands of Christ Jesus, our Lord, through the gift of eternal life. Okay. Knowing this, your wise response, our response, our wise response is to glory in the Lord. Okay. Can you see that? Please, ma'am, please, sir, when you count your blessings, look to the Lord 
as the source. Let's look at these scriptures in detail. Tell the truth about the goodness of the Lord and enjoy his spirit. We'll reach an amen and praise and hallelujah that's worthy to shout about and give us a reason to be thankful in this season of thanksgiving. So the Lord says, consider your calling. How many of us in here have been called by the Lord? You have an anointing on your life. Okay? The Lord has called your name Say, come up here a little higher. Come up here, Earl, a little higher. Okay? Come up here, Trey Garnett, a little higher. Amen? Come up here, Sister Dorothy, a little higher. Okay? Whoever you are, the Lord knows you by name and will call you up. So he says to us first, consider your calling and recognize God's choices. Okay? So he goes on to say that God doesn't choose those wise in the accomplishments that exalt mankind, okay? But those humble to recognize his hand in the works of their life. How many of y'all know about Job? Okay? Job was a righteous man who shewed evil Means, meaning he avoided evil right, right. in his life. Oh, yeah. But the Lord thought he was strong enough to even withstand the test of Satan. Right. And we know the story about Job, okay, oh, yeah. how wise he was. One of the things I liked about Job was that he was the, a teacher of the word. Right. Now, many of us know that about him, but right. when he was right. arguing with his friends after, the, the, after Satan uh, afflicted him in many ways, took his sons, his daughters, took his cattle, his land off that he owned, and made Job almost destitute. Right. All he had left was the boils on his skin. Right. And he suffered, but his friends were there for him. Oh, yeah. okay? Job said, I'm going to teach you in the hand of God, and what's with the Almighty, you know, I will not conceal. So even in his affliction, even yeah. in his trouble, yeah. Job had enough sense yeah. to look yeah. at the Lord yeah. for a way to get out of it. Yeah. And the book concludes by saying that all that Job had, and you know Job was the richest man of his day, yeah. the Lord even doubled up on all that he had. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tell me Job didn't consider his calling and recognize the choices that God had on his life. Paul goes on to say that few mighty, unless their might is in uh, humility to God. God doesn't choose the mighty. He doesn't need to show himself through mighty folks. You know, if folks got uh, might, you know, might be their finances, might be strength of body, things like that, that just comes with their position in the Lord. Okay? But the Lord wants us to recognize Him in all our achievements, all the greatness that we might consider. Consider Moses. Okay, Moses was the humblest man of his day. How many of us know that God makes His place with the humble? Amen. He won't make His place with folks that are proud. Okay, lifting up a proud eye. Okay, lifting up their own self worth. Okay? But God looks at the humble. Okay? And not only that, but he uh, blessed Samson too. Okay? Which is a, a different side of that same coin. Yeah. Samson was kind of proud. He was one of those strong men yeah. of his day. Okay? But he realized that his strength came from the Lord. Okay? And the Lord used him to even out the uh, peace in uh, the area of Israel where they were living and coming up. Uh -huh. And he made a difference in the nation of Israel by uh, Samson, his servant. Okay? Job, I mean, Paul goes on to say the noble aren't chosen. Uh -huh. Okay? Me meaning people born of uh, noble birth. Right, right. Okay? Born around the crown and the uh, seat of the kingdom. Okay? Yeah. Uh, the noble aren't chosen often unless they recognize 
They have a king in heaven. Okay? We might consider David. Okay? David didn't come to the crown uh, uh, as offspring. Okay? He was anointed by God to take the crown of Israel. And that he did. He waited several years, I think three, three, maybe five years, before he was given the seat of the kingdom. And uh, the nation of Israel was never the same after King uh, David. Matter of fact, the symbol on their flag is called the Star of David. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Signifying the, the many things that uh, David did to uh, strengthen and uh, make known the powers of the kingdom of Israel and their God. Okay, And every accomplishment that David made in his life was through his relationship with the Lord. Hezekiah, okay, the king, okay, uh, wrote a letter. Uh, a letter was sent. Uh, well, he didn't write the letter, but the letter was written to him okay, to surrender himself. Says he didn't have the power to resist uh, the Babylonians coming against them, uh, the uh, uh, Syrians. And he took that letter, letter and laid it before the Lord and prayed to God uh, yeah, that he man, would man. fix this problem for him. And the Lord made a way for him, yeah. even though uh, the nation of Judah was smaller uh, than their enemies. Asa, okay, King Asa. Uh, he was uh, living after the time of Solomon. Okay, you, we know Solomon had many wives. Okay? Many wives, all different sorts of gods, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Bell and uh, uh, all, all, I can't even remember all the names of them. There were so many of them. You know? But they uh, didn't worship the true and living God, Yahweh of the dead. So he had all these wives, and he had a soft heart towards his wives, and he would go and uh, worship with them. They went to the high places and lifted uh, banners of praise and uh, high places to praise all these other gods, and uh, Solomon lost track of his relationship with the one and true God, okay? But uh, uh, as a result of that, the kingdom got divided at Rehoboam and, Jer and uh, Jeroboam. Uh, there was conflict there. Uh, they took that um, poly polytheism uh, to the later kings. Asa was one of the kings. He was the king of, uh, one of the first kings in the southern kingdom that was true to God. Man. Matter of fact, Asa was so uh, God-fearing, such a God-fearing man, he even uh, took his mother, who was the queen, and uh, deposed her because she was worshiping uh, the goddess of Sharon of the day. So he took her queenship away from her and uh, put her to a lower state. She was just his mother <laughs> from then, that point on, because she wouldn't uh, go along with the program of the king, which was to worship the true and living God, who is Yahweh, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, okay? So, the noble aren't always chosen, but the Lord has a hand in the, 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 the uh, seat of power among people. So Paul goes on to say that God can use the foolish to shame the wise. Okay, you know anybody like that? <laughs> Nobody but God Almighty. Okay? He can use the weak to shame the strong. Okay? The insignificant and despised to shame the popular and accepted. Okay? If you're not amongst the popular in high school, okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Because God can use you to do the good work in your environment that he wants to do. Let him do it. Yeah. Let him do it, young people. Okay? God can use the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Okay? So don't worry about your existence. God has a handle on it. Okay? You 
are his workmanship, yes, yes. created in Christ Jesus for good works that God yes. prepared right. beforehand just for you Amen. to do. Amen. 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 <coughs> okay? Uh, <coughs> and these things he has done that no flesh glory. should glory in his presence. Yes. Okay? It's God who has called you in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Christ became for us wisdom, okay? God's wisdom. He was the Logos, uh -huh. okay? Y'all know what the Logos is? Yes, sir. All right, when we look at uh, the divine wisdom of God as it's manifested in us as uh -huh. people, we can see it in creation. Oh, yeah. The sun still goes across the sky. Oh, yeah. and the moon by night, we can still see the planets, Yes, in yes. this galaxy, uh -huh. there are many others, okay? Many stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. But God's hand is in government, okay? All right. This government that we have, uh -huh. okay? Three, three chambers of government, uh -huh. okay? It was never tried before, yes. but the American experiment is some 243 years old now. Yes. And it's been the best example uh -huh. of God's hand in government to this day. All right. All right. But uh, not only that, but redemption of the world. Uh -huh. We know that God sent his son. The son gave his life. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. That by him we all might be saved. Uh -huh. And everyone who believes in him shall not perish, uh -huh. but shall have uh -huh. eternal life. Yeah. Yes, and all these things, mm -hmm. major things, are expressed in Christ Jesus as the Logos, okay? Not only that, uh, Christ became for us the righteousness of God. Uh -huh. God can't lie, okay? Amen. He knows all truth, Amen. which makes him omnipotent, okay? Amen. There's no other power known to man uh -huh. beside the Holy Ghost power, okay. and that power is right here in our lives. We know, how many of y'all know the kingdom of God is right here? Yeah. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah. In the heart. Yeah, sir. And that kingdom is expressed by the power of the Holy Ghost working on our lives. Right, right. He came, the Son and the Father knocked on the doors of your heart and said, if you let us in, we'll come and sup with you yeah. in the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you let him in, which I hope you did, yeah, yeah. amen, he's come and he's made a place in your life oh, yeah. to bring you into salvation yeah. that the Lord God Almighty has for you through his uh, son, Christ Jesus. Christ became for us sanctification, okay? Becoming godly or godlike, uh, our source of hope is expressed through the program of sanctification that the Lord works in our lives. He's continually washing, pruning, and making us better in the power of his Holy Spirit working on our life. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but we have redeemed. We've been redeemed. Yes. Amen. The penalty and, uh, that we were to pay for sin has been paid for already. Okay? God uh, requires us to let it go. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And if we are willing to let it go and hold on to our belief and fear of God, amen, then we will become more and more like Christ Jesus in our lives. And then we will have every reason, every reason will be ours to glorify in the risen Lord. Amen. We know that the Lord Jesus came to express the love that God has for mankind. Oh, yeah. He spent three years to train a, a new uh, new kingdom, a new nation uh, in his name. Uh, he gave his life. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat him all night long. and yeah. uh, They put him in a, a mock trial with all intent to uh, uh, claim that he's guilty of, of uh, going against the Roman government of the day. And he willingly gave his life, really realizing that this was his uh, destiny from uh, be the beginnings of time. Uh -huh. 
the Lord sent him to give his life on our behalf yeah. that we might have power over sin. Amen. Yeah. And we do have power. Uh, the grave no longer has a sting. Yeah. Okay? And death has no uh, uh, reign over our lives because the great and wonderful price that he paid on Calvary's hill. And he got up after the third day with all power in his hands. And we have reason to glorify him. Amen. Uh, your desire to boast finds rightness in boasting in the Lord because it's he who can exhaust our thanks. And why can the Lord re exhaust our, our thanks? Tell us, tell us. Because uh, he's good. Oh, yeah. He's good than good. Oh, yeah. As Pastor Fulham used to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. His mercy endures forever. Oh, yeah. okay. He's worthy because of uh, uh, he's worthy of anything, any thanks that we can give him. Amen. Uh, the uh, writer said, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to thank the Lord. He is the Lord of hosts. How many of y'all know what a host is? Okay. It's a military uh, battalion, okay, or regiment. A whole lot of army soldiers and everything. He's the Lord of uh, uh the host. He's strong and mighty. Yes, yes. He's mighty in battle. Yeah. Amen. The heavens declare uh -huh. the glory of God. Oh, okay? yeah. Their voices know no bounds in language yeah. or place. Yeah. His law is perfect. Uh -huh. His testimony is sure. Oh, yeah. His statutes are right and his commandment is sure. Oh, yeah. the, the, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring, uh -huh forever. His judgments are true and right. And who can thank the Lord enough? Amen. Not you, not me, but he's due any thanks that we can give him. Any little thanks he's worthy of. Can you thank the Lord today? Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our thanks. In this season of thanksgiving, we join together as our forefathers did many centuries ago to give the Lord thanks oh, yeah. and just recognize all the many wonderful things that he has blessed us with. Oh, yeah. And we're thankful that we have the privilege today to gather together in freedom. And it's a privilege, y'all. Oh, yeah. We shouldn't take it for granted. Any form or fashion, we can meet together and bring praises to our great and awesome God. Oh, yeah. Amen. He's worthy of it. Oh, yeah. We oh, ought yeah. to give him thanks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise.